Thank you for tuning in to HR Revivals. It's always the hour for revival. I'm your brother in the Lord, brother HR. It's always the hour for revival. Bless the Lord, Father. Hide me behind the cross. There have been enemy, but all of you. Smithed this up the clay and let my leave here singing. I got just what I wanted and more from the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, Brother Eric. Thank you for tuning in today to HR Revivals. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. We going to have church here this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We going to have church here this morning. Praise the Lord. I just heard something like somebody cried out. I looked back to see what was going on. Hallelujah. Going to wait for a few more people to tune in this morning, and then we're going to get started over here. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, that's the goats down there. <laughs> that's what I'm hearing. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. One more tag. There we go. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hey, Brother Chris, God bless you. Good morning. Hallelujah. Good morning, my brother Michael. God bless you. Hallelujah. Barry, Tanya, God bless you. Hallelujah. Wikisa, God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're getting ready to get started here. Just waiting for a few more people to tune in, and we're going to get started. There we go. Praise the Lord. Brother James Scott, God bless you, brother. Hallelujah. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. If you got your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Proverbs. Hallelujah. One of my favorite books. Book of Proverbs. Hey, Pastor Clinton, God bless you, Apostle. Proverbs chapter 9, actually Proverbs chapter 10, verses 6 through 7. Proverbs chapter 10, verses 6 through 7. Good morning, Sister Jennifer. God bless you. Hallelujah. This is a wonderful service today. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 10, verses 6 and 7. And the name of today's message is entitled... Will you rest in God's peace or will you rot in pieces? Will you rest in God's peace or will you rot in pieces is what I'm preaching about today. Thank you, Jesus. It's a self-examination message. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Blessings are upon the head of the just, but violence is... Cover it the mouth of the wicked. Lord have mercy. Hallelujah. The wicked just don't know when to shut up. And they're the ones that always keep getting into trouble. But the righteous will have blessings in their life. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. That's why the Bible said we're to bless those that, Jesus said, we're to bless those that curse us. Do good to those that despitefully use you. Why? Because of one reason. The Bible says that the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. So if you're cursing those that curse you, you're cursing your own blessing. Can I get an amen? Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Blessings are upon the head of the just, but violence covered the mouth of the wicked. <laughs> the memory of the just is blessed. But the name of the wicked shall rot. 
The memory of the just is blessed, but the name of the wicked will rot. I can give you a few names right now that bring the most rotten taste in your mouth. One of them off the top of the list, Adolf Hitler. You get a very bad taste in your mouth thinking about that devil, devil of a man. Uh, you know, there's uh, uh, Henry Rudolph, the, uh, the or, uh, not Henry Rudolph, the, uh, the guy, the Rudolph guy that bombed the buildings back then. You know, you Eric Rudolph, that's it. Eric Rudolph. You get a bad taste thinking about people with bad names. Because the Bible said a good name is better than silver and gold. Amen? When I leave this world behind, I hope I leave behind a good name. Because a good name is better than silver, and it's better than gold. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. Bless God. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. You can't. Take it with you. You wouldn't. You 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 wouldn't born a billionaire with all the money in the world. Some people might have been, but you can't take it with you. When you go out of this world, the only thing you can take with you is you, your spirit. That's all you can take with you. Thank you, Jesus. As I've heard it said a million times, you never see an armored car following a hearse. Thank you, Jesus. Pharaoh tried that, and just ask Pharaoh how good that worked out for him. They was buried with their slaves and all their riches. And it never worked for them. Thank you, Jesus. What am I saying? The name of a good man, the name of a good woman, shall be blessed, but the name of the wicked shall rot. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, have mercy. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Now, go over here to second Psalm. Uh, uh, go to the second, cha uh, the second scripture here. Tra uh, Psalms chapter 9. Go to Psalms chapter 9 if you got your Bibles now. Psalms chapter 9. We ain't gonna, I ain't going to be before you long, but I will be before you today. Hallelujah. Psalms chapter 9, verses 13 through 17. Psalms 9, 13 through 17. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Have mercy upon me, O Lord. Consider my trouble which I suffer of them that hate me. Thou that liftest me up from the gates of death. He lifts us up from the gates of death. Hear what I'm saying. How does he lift us up from the gates of death? Because he holds the keys to death, hell, and the grave. Revelation 118. He holds the key to death, hell, and the grave. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus holds the key to death, hell, and the grave. The devil ain't got no authority over your life. Because Jesus holds the key to your fate and to my fate. Amen. Hey, Cheryl, God bless you. I'm glad you could tune in. Amen. Hey, Patty, God bless you. Bless God. Hallelujah. That I... It says, that lifts me up from the gates of death, that I may show forth all thy praise in the gates of the daughter of Zion. That's a heavenly place. I will rejoice in thy salvation. Remember what he said. He said, on that day they'll hear either enter in or depart from me. But for those who are the righteous of God, they shall hear, enter into thy place of rest, for he gives his beloved rest. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. The heathen are sunk down into the pit that they made in the net which they hid in their own foot taken. They hid. Is their own foot taken? The Lord is known by the judgment 
which he executeth. The wicked is snared in the work of his own hand. Hagion, Selah, let it be, is what it says. Amen. The wicked shall be turned into hell. And all the nations that forget God. And all the nations that forget God. Now, you know, those who've actually been to hell and come back said that they felt a darkness around them. It was a darkness that could be felt. That's in the book of Saul, in the book of Exodus also, talking about a darkness that could be felt upon Egypt. God said, I'm going to release a darkness that can be felt upon Egypt. When when people had died and gone to hell and came back by the grace of God, they said that they felt a darkness that could be felt. This darkness had a life to it, but it was a diabolical life that people have testified to have filled, felt. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The wicked shall be turned into hell and all nations that forget God. Listen to this. Do you know that there is a scripture that proves that God forgets those in hell? I just read one part of it to you. He forgets those in hell, those that have died, those that are burning, because he does it for his, he does it so his heart won't break for eternity. Why else do you think Jesus said, Depart from me, for I know you not. It's like he was talking to somebody he had never heard of. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. And which answers the question, will we know our loved ones in heaven? Absolutely. We will be known as we were known. But Lord, have mercy if we ever come across the day God forgets us. I said, there won't be no mercy for the day that God forgets those people that are in hell. God forgets those who are in hell. Why? Because his heart don't want to break for all of eternity. Good morning, Brother Patrick. God bless you. Hallelujah. He don't want to hurt for all of eternity. That's why the Bible says on that last day, every tear will be wiped away from our eyes. Why? Because all the struggle, all the hell is over. Let me tell you something. The gap has been shut. The gap has been closed. What do I mean by that? The Bible says in the time that Jesus spoke about, about the great rift between heaven and hell, between paradise and hell, you can look over from paradise and see hell, and you can see everybody you loved in hell, but God sealed off that rift when he led captivity captive. He took them and sealed off that rift. Now our loved ones that don't make it will not be remembered. He said, neither will you remember the former things of old. If your loved one didn't make it, they won't be remembered in heaven for your benefit because it wouldn't be heaven if you knew your loved one made it to hell instead of heaven. God will erase their memory from you like it was never there. You won't remember that person. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Also in Psalms, I'm going to try, brother Michael. Hallelujah. Also it says in the book of Psalms that these nations, and it lists the nations, it said these nations were enemies of God, but now have been accepted unto Zion, that they, that they now become a part of the family of God, and the Lord himself has registered them with Zion. 
They've been registered for heaven. They've been added to the registry. They're going to heaven. Those nations that at one time were enemies of God have now been registered with God in heavenly places. God is a, I feel an angel of fire right now by my side. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Fire. In Jesus' name, bless God. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Let's get back to the righteous and the wicked, though. Hallelujah. Will you rest in his peace or will you rot? in pieces. Amen. Hey, Sister Donna, God bless you. Hey, Brother Joey, God bless you. Psalms 112, verses 1 through 10. Let's go there now. Psalms 112, verses 1 two through 10. Thank you, Jesus. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighteth greatly in his commandments. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth, the generations of the upright shall be blessed. Amen. What did it say? The name of the righteous shall be blessed. He said your seed shall rise and call you blessed. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Unto the upright, it says, wealth and riches shall be in his house. And his righteousness endureth forever. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Unto the upright ariseth a light in the darkness. He is gracious and full of compassion and righteousness. Righteous. He is full of compassion and righteous. Let me ask you this. Do you know what he's talking about? The valley of the shadow of death. There arises a light in the darkness. 90% of the people that have died will tell you when they step beyond that veil, they see darkness. But then those who call on the name of the Lord, waiting for the Lord to show up, there's a light that pierces it through the darkness. This is talking about at the time of death, there's a light that appears in the darkness. Thank you, Jesus. A good man showeth favor and leadeth. He will guide his affairs with discretion. He, he won't let everybody know what he's doing. He's just going to take care of business while he's got business to take care of. He said, I'm going to prepare my affairs. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. That's why I believe we should have our affairs in order before death walks through the door and takes us out of this world. We should have our affairs in order, ready to meet our maker. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. The inheritance I'm going to leave my children and grandchildren one day. That inheritance will be a good name. I'm not hung up on the silver or gold. There was an incident the other day where a lady got so mad at me because of a little scratch on her car, one little scratch. She wanted to take me to court. I said, lady, it's just a car. And the Lord spoke to me and he said, son, why do you think I said in my word, don't build up treasures on earth? that thieves and robbers can destroy. He said, people get so mad over temporal things. Temporal things. This world and the things in this world, hear me now, they will pass away, but it's going to only matter what you done with Jesus that's going to last. And I'm going to get into that in a minute too. Praise the Lord. I'm really getting ahead of myself in this message, but I feel like people need to hear this today. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Surely he shall not be moved forever. The righteous shall be in everlasting rest and remembrance. 
Oh, did you get that? Surely he shall not be moved forever. The righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. Oh, <laughs> glory to God. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. Uh, his heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. His heart is established. He shall not be afraid until he sees his desires upon his enemies. He hath despised, he hath given to the poor the righteous. His righteousness endureth forever. His horn shall be exalted with honor. The wicked shall see it and be grieved. He shall gnash his teeth and melt away. The desires of the wicked shall perish. Hey, Sister Deborah, God bless you. But notice it says they will gnash their teeth. If you look back at Luke chapter 13, verse 28, he said, and on that day there'll be weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. Don't get me preaching now. You know I will. <laughs> I believe you're a righteous man, brother. Praise the Lord. Amen. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but I know it's blessing somebody. Thank you, Jesus. Will you rest in his peace or will you rot in pieces? Will your memory fade from the earth? Or will it last forever in the courtrooms of heaven? Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Fourth scripture I'd like you to have is Matthew 25, 41 through 46. Matthew 25, 41 through 46. Thank you, Lord. Then they shall say unto them, Wait a minute. And the king shall answer, verse 40, And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, In so much as you've done it unto the least of them, You've done it also unto me. It says, As you've done it unto the least of these my brethren, You've done it unto me. He said, these are my brothers. These are my family. Hey, Sister Cynthia, God bless you. Hallelujah. He said, as you've done it unto the least of these, you've done it unto me as well. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 41. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungered, and you gave me not meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you took me not in. Naked, and you clothed me not. Sick in prison, and you visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we hungry, or when or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then he shall answer unto them, saying, Verily I say unto thee, as much as you've done it unto, as much as you did it not to one of the least of these, you did it not unto me. 
The first one he was talking about caring and doing the work of the Father. He said, as much as you've done it to the least of these, as I've commanded you to do, you've done it unto me. But he also said, for those that didn't do what I've commanded you to do, I feel that fire of God again. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. The angel moved from my side to behind me. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Then he shall answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, as much as you did it not to one of the least of these, you did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Will you rest in his peace, or will you rot in pieces? Amen. Bless you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, I tell you, I believe in having your affairs in order. I said that earlier. Like getting life insurance. I believe in it. I believe your family should have everything taken care of after you've gone home to be with Jesus. But before you can take care of everything, I think the first thing you need to take care of is your afterlife insurance. Make sure your salvation is in God. Make sure you're right with God so you can be saved from the hell fire to come. Amen. There's insurance, there's life insurance, then there's actual life insurance. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. You don't hear preaching on hellfire no more. That's why I think the, the church is in trouble like it is. Because you don't hear that kind of preaching no more. That kind of preaching has been lost to the church. But I'm here to bring it back to the church. Amen. I still believe in grace. But baby, I believe there's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. Amen? <laughs> Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Bless you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Bless you, Holy Ghost. Let me tell you something. Did you know that there are three books in which you will stand before God with? Revelation 20 and 12. And the books were open. I saw the dead, both small and great, stand before God. And the books were open. And another book were open, which is the book of life. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Revelation 20 and 12. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. The books are the books of remembrance. Malachi 3, 16. And Exodus 32 and 3. And the book of deeds. Revelation 20 and 12. And then there's the Lamb's book of life. Amen. That's right, Brother Joey. We must be insured beyond the grave. Amen. That's right, brother. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Well, you know, just like an insurance policy, insurance can lapse. You know, the Bible says that there were those whose name was written in the book of life, but their names had gotten blotted out because they fell away from the faith. Amen. Make sure your insurance is paid up because insurance can lapse. Come on, somebody. I hope you're getting what I'm saying now. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Let me show you eternal security is not biblical. Except for the fact that if you live for Jesus and don't back away from Him, He will He'll forgive you and He'll let you live with Him. If you'll stick with the cross, the cross will stick with you. Because salvation puts you on the cross. Religion puts you around it. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Revelation 3 and 5 says this. He that overcometh to the end shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. Did you just read that with me? Revelation 3 and 5. 
He just showed us that eternal security is not biblical. Revelation 2, 3 through 4. Realize where you've fallen and repent quickly before I come and remove the candlestick from its place. Hebrews 6 and 6. If you trample the blood, there's therefore no more redemption left for you. That's talking about people who committed the unforgivable sin. After getting saved, they... But you know, here's the thing. There's so much detail into that. People would literally have to know what they're doing to do it. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. What am I saying? God is a good God, but you've got to understand you can't play with His grace and expect to go to a heavenly place. Amen? Grace is not a license to sin. It's a, it's a gift to, to, to be free from sinning. Amen? Bless your Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I love you, Lord. Ecclesiastes 12 and 6, 12 uh, through, I think it's like 12, 1 through 6 or 7, it talks about, Ecclesiastes 12, 1 through 7 talks about some man who died and it's talking about his near-death experience. It's talking about the silver cord being cut and the, and the bowl being burst. And then it's talking about the golden vessel and, it, and it, it mentions three vessels that's mentioned also in second timothy 2 20 that there are some vessels that god uses for destruction and there's other vessels the golden vessel the vessel of honor the righteous man is the golden vessel the clay man that is bust the the bowl the the, the uh clay man is the man who's walked in the flesh the man of dishonor and the man of destruction, the final bowl, the final, the hay, amen. There's vessels of hay. And the Bible says in that day when you stand before God, that your deeds will be tried in the fire. The fire of God will try your works, and that which was done of your own flesh will be burned up, but that which is done for the glory of God shall remain. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. That which is done for your work will be destroyed, but that which is done for the glory of God shall remain. Bless your Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I love you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. I think I got enough time left on this phone before I had to go to work. Uh, fit. I got enough time to go there. Ecclesiastes. If y'all want to go there with me, you can. Hallelujah. Ecclesiastes, hallelujah. Ecclesiastes 12, let's go over there real quick. I just heard the Lord say, jump over to Ecclesiastes. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Here we go, Ecclesiastes 12. Let, let me go ahead and read. Here you go. Let's start Ecclesiastes 12, verse 1 through 7. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory and hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Remember now, thy Creator, in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, 
when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. The Bible said there is pleasure in sin for a season. I'm trying to close, but the Lord won't let me. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. There is pleasure in sin for a season. Amen. While the sun or the light or the moon or the stars be darkened, nor the clouds return after the rain. This is talking about this man's season is coming to an end. His life is at a standstill. It's getting ready to meet its maker. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. But he's saying... It said the sun, while the sun or the light or the moon or the stars be not darkened. He's saying he's not going into outer darkness. He's going into light. He ain't going to hell. But his season for this life is ending at the same time. Bless your Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. In that day when the keepers of the house shall tremble and the strong men shall bow themselves and the grinders cease because they are few and those that look out of the window be darkened. There are those who see death as a dark thing, but this man saw it as a light in the midst of the darkness. Come on, somebody. You better get to shouting hallelujah. Amen, brother. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble, there's a lot of people that are afraid of dying. They're afraid of the day of death because they've not made their peace with God. They're afraid of standing before God. The Bible says to those who do evil, be very afraid of that day. But the Bible shows us for those who fall. Now the Bible said it's a dreadful thing to fall in the hands of an angry God. For vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. But look at this. For the righteous, there's nothing to fear falling asleep in the arms of Jesus. Because the Bible said when when Stephen was being stoned, that he looked up and said, Hold not this sin to their charge. And the Bible said, And he laid down and took a nap. <laughs> I love it. He laid down and took a nap. He never woke up from this side of the grave, but he woke up on the other side of the grave. The Bible said, that Jonah found himself on the wrong side of paradise because when he woke up, the bars were about him forever and he was in torment. He was going through something because he died and it taught about the seaweed wrapping around his head and going down into the bowels of the earth. Bless your Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Jonah found himself on the wrong side of paradise. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. But God pulled him out of hell and he'll do the same for you. The Bible said, hating the sin. We need to snatch them out of the fires of hell. Why? He says, save some by love, some by fear. Hating the very sin and snatching them out of the fires of hell. You don't need to always hear just a grace message. Sometimes you need the hell shaking out of you. Amen. Somebody needed to say amen on that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Bless you, Holy Ghost. I do love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. I hope people are sharing this message. Hey, Sister Hattie, I, I saw you were over here. Amen. The door shall be shut in the streets when the sound of the grinding is a low, and he shall rise up at a, 
at the voice of the bird, and all the daughters of music shall be brought low. He said, I'm over here singing. I'm going to have a reason to rejoice when I step free from this fallen world. Amen. Bless your Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, God. I had to wait till that noise passed by. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Also, when they shall be afraid of which is high, and fear shall be in the way, and the almond tree shall flourish, and the grasshopper shall be a burden, and desire shall fail, because man goeth to his long home. God bless you, Sister Karen. Man goeth to his long home. It's talking about him passing away and going to his long home called heaven. He said, David said in one of the book of Psalms, he said, there's trouble for a little time, then we fly away. There is trouble for a little time, and then we fly away. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. It said they will be afraid of that which is high. They're going to be afraid of going to heaven. And fear shall be in the way, and the almond trees shall flourish, and the grasshopper shall be a burden, and the desire shall fail, because man goeth to his long home, and the mourners go about the streets. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. The Bible says we are, and it says it in Ecclesiastes, amen? It says man is to weep at birth and rejoice at death. Weep for the trouble that you know is coming for them. But rejoice if you know that they made it home, amen? Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Now here you go. Or, or ever the silver cord be loosed, or the golden bowl be broken, that's a, that's a man who's lived in righteousness, or the pitcher be broken at the fountain, that's the clay, that's the man who lived by the flesh instead of by the spirit, or the wheel be broken at the cistern, that's the final pot. That, that's the final vessel, the vessel that was made for destruction. That's people like Adolf Hitler. Saddam Hussein. That's, that's the people right there. Bless you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Go to 2 Timothy 2.20 in our clothes. Amen. I didn't know I was going to get this deep into the sermon today, but the Father took us a different direction. Amen. And I'm so happy that He did. Bless you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. 2 Timothy 2.20 But in a great house there are no, not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and earth. There you go, the wood, the earth, the earth is the wheel. And some to honor and some for dishonor. Which vessel are you that will be broken on that day? When your spirit man is released, because you who know anything about birth and know that this cord that they're talking about is nothing like a umbilical cord. This cord that they're talking about is the cord of the Spirit when you're being birthed into eternity. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. There's three positions before birth. There is, I, I can't remember all the positions, but if you look at the physical, then at the spiritual, as Paul said, First the physical, then the spiritual. If you look at a birthing, and then you see the final crowning moment when that child is pushed forth, 
everything from start to finish of a birth matches to a spiritual birth. A physical birth matches to a spiritual birth. Bless you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I love you, Lord. That's why he told Nicodemus, you must be born again. Bless you, Holy Ghost. I do love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Because when that silver cord, the cord of that spirit is cut from the earth, and your body be broken free of that spirit, your spirit man be free from that body. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord. When that spirit is broke free from that body and you go to your eternal home long away, when you go to your rest, or I say it like this, the day they put me in that box in the ground and then go home to eat fried chicken, amen? <laughs> That's the day I'm going to be perfect. When they put me in that box, go home and eat fried chicken. That's the day I'm going to be perfect. Till then, I've got flaws. I understand that. But it does the potter good to remake the vessel. Amen? Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. So my question to you today is the same as the beginning. Will you rest in his peace or will you rot in pieces? If you're lost or backslid, pray this prayer to me. Dear Jesus, I repent of my sins. I believe you died on the cross that God the Father raised you from the dead and I am saved. I put my life, Lord Jesus, in your hands. Fill me with your spirit that I might make heaven my home. Wash me and cleanse me in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, I'm coming home to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. I hope this message has been a blessing to the body of Christ because I had no idea I was going to preach it. Until the last minute, God said, this is what I want you to preach tomorrow. It was a need in the body, and that's why God changed the message at the last second. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Write to me. Let me know what God has done for you. I want to send you a certificate of sonship. Even a daughter can be a son. So to write to me, let me know what God has done for you. Kid Henry, K I D D H E N R Y 617 at gmail.com. Bless God. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Bless God. Kid Henry, K I D D H E N R Y 617 at gmail.com. Hallelujah. If you're bound up, actually if you're sick in your body, I curse every devil of sickness. I command it to loose your body. Let you go free in Jesus' name. Create miracles right now in the name of Jesus. Right now, Father, take every sickness, every symptom from their body in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for creating miracles right now in the name of Yeshua, Jesus, Messiah. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now for those bound up by addiction, I curse every devil of addiction. I command every addiction, receive an eviction in Jesus' name by holy conviction right now. Every addiction, loose their mind, loose their body in Jesus' name. He who the Son sets free is free indeed. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Every addiction receive an eviction by holy conviction. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. 
He that the Son says free is free indeed. According to them, one nine, the attack cannot come back. And the Bible said we overcome the devil by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. So I say this, get out and get going. Go and preach the gospel. Go tell everybody what God's done for you. Because he has ordained you to tell the good news. And I thank you, Lord, that right now people are going to get filled with the Holy Ghost so they can go forth and pray for the sick and God to heal them. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Right now, Lord Jesus, do it in Jesus' name. Jesus is the baptizer in the Holy Ghost and fire. And if you've never been baptized in the Holy Ghost and in fire, Jesus will do it right now. Do it, Lord Jesus. Fire. 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 In Jesus' name, washing of the water of the word. I do that prophetically in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen and amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Like I said, write to me, Kid Henry, K I D D H E N R Y 617 at gmail.com. I want to celebrate with you because heaven is celebrating already. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. I'll see you in the next meeting or in the air in heaven. I love you. Thank you for tuning in to HR Revivals. It's always the hour for revival. I'll see you in the next meeting or in the air in heaven. I'm your brother in the Lord, brother HR, and it's always the hour for revival. See you in the next meeting or in the air in heaven. I'll be live tomorrow, and I'll be live Sunday morning, and then Tuesday at 10 a.m., I'm going to be doing Bible training classes on Tuesday mornings at 10 a.m. If you would like to, you can still sign up for them classes. They're free of charge. Hallelujah. Write to me. Let me know you want them classes. And at the end of an extended period of time, I will release ordination papers to those who join the classes. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in to HR Revivals. It's always the hour for revival. I'm your brother in the Lord, Brother HR. It's always the hour for revival. In Jesus' name. See you in the next meeting in the air in heaven. I love you. Bye-bye.